seldom comes an artist who doesn't surrender to the corporate machinery which is the American music industry and truly works for the passion of his art. One such genius who has made a name for himself in the past decade is Christopher Lonnie Bro, now known as Frank Ocean. He changed his name in 2010 when he scored a major record deal. You know an artist is truly good when everyone from Beyonce to Kanye wants to work with him. Hello everyone and welcome to our YouTube channel. Are you also wondering where has Frank Ocean vanished after delivering such back-to-back -back hit albums? Then fret not today, we're here to discuss what happened to Frank Ocean. Before we get started, don't forget to like, comment and share. Also, subscribe and hit the bell icon so you'll never miss any updates. Behind the scenes success. You can tell Frank Ocean is all about working hard and following his passion when you hear the tale of his humble beginnings. In 2009, he was working 11 jobs to support his family while he was writing for other artists. Instead of covering songs to catch the eye of a big label, he was working on creating a reputation as a serious musician and songwriter. His experience of working behind the camera showed him that side of the industry to which many singers are often oblivious. His talent was undeniable even when he was a writer, as he wrote for some big names like Justin Bieber, John Legend and Brandy. His work has always made him stand out, he didn't need to blow his own trumpet record deal. Soon in 2010, he signed with the Def Jam Islands for his first studio album. Although he wasn't new to the workings of the industry as he had been working in the writing capacity still, he wasn't ready for the attitude of the management. As much as he was in this for the art, others weren't. After signing, he soon realised the label's intention as they weren't willing to provide the resources for the kind of album he wanted to produce. Instead of compromising on his vision, he self-funded his debut mixtape Nostalgia Ultra. He did it so silently, even his label didn't even get to know and the album was released for free in 2011. It then gained this cult status among the fans that they shamed Def Jam Island for not supporting such talent. Eventually, they did compensate Ocean and gave him the creative freedom for his first full-fledged studio album, Channel Orange confession about his sexuality. Ocean has always remained an enigma among his fans. He doesn't go nuts when it comes to promotion, which is why whenever he speaks, it commands everyone's attention. Because people know he is speaking his truth and not just repeating off cue cards. Right before his debut album release, Ocean did something which no new hip hop artist could ever even think of doing and that too at such a sensitive time. Ocean came out as queer. He shared his experience of how he fell in love with a man and talked about how it inspired his lead single, thinking about you. His boldness and honesty were appreciated by his true fans, but he also got backlash. Some even said they'll boycott this song, but if they thought Frank cared about their view, clearly they didn't know him at all. Like the artistic person he is, he didn't reveal it on a talk show with an over-enthusiastic host. He did what he does best. He shared his feelings in a moving thank you note where he didn't just say those three words, but poetically shared his truth with his fans who understand his lyricism. After his note, whenever the interviewer asked him about about his orientation, he said, I'll respectfully say that life is dynamic and comes along with dynamic experiences and the same sentiment that I have towards genres of music I have towards a lot of labels and boxes and shit. War of Authority It's no secret huge media corporations usually don't care about creative expression and only look at artists as a money-making machine. Even Disney stars turned pop stars have complained about the factory treatment whose music and the image both are controlled by these people. Then how was this possible that Frank wouldn't face such an issue, especially when he is already way above the pop chart rankings? He had previously talked about their creative difference and their lack of interest in the kind of work he wanted to do, but they were the ones who also never shied away from making a humongous profit over something that he made with his own vision and sometimes with his own funds too. About his separation with Def Jam Island, the notoriously press averse Ocean told the New York Times, it started to weigh on me that I was responsible for the moves that had made me successful, but I wasn't reaping the lion's share of the profits and that was problematic for me. Views on awards. There are two types of performers, one whose ego gets satisfied after winning awards and making hundreds of millions and the other one gets happy by not compromising on his morals and still having a loyal group of fans. You can easily tell which one does Ocean belong to. With a personality like his, it's no wonder awards don't excite him much. In recent times, Grammy's reputation has already been not so great. This is clear from the statement that Ocean gave to a magazine as he doesn't believe the awards validate his art as they usually don't represent his people.
people well. Like performing at the VMAs, being tapped to perform at the Grammys, me saying yes to those things had a lot to do with how those things made me feel before I was actually in the business and just wanting to be rubbing shoulders with those people and being seen at those places. I still was reluctant and sort of skeptical of those things because I questioned whether or not I was prepared, he told the New York Times, adding that the Grammys in particular, that institution certainly has nostalgic importance. It doesn't seem to be representing very well for people who come from where I come from and hold down what I hold down independent artist. People like Ocean always remain independent artists at heart as they don't fit well into the corporate music environment. He didn't only say that artists know his art, the best he proved it. As it was already known, he didn't like being in contract with Def Jam Island right after his release. With them, he did something unpredictable. This was even a bigger shock to people than him coming out. As soon as he released his last album, Endless, with them he also released his own independent album, which he had been secretly working on, titled Blonde. They tried their best to milk this last album the best by making it scarcely available. It couldn't even be streamed due to their deal with Apple. Blonde overshadowed Endless and went straight to the number one spot. He released it under his own music label, Boys Don't Cry. He really went there and beat the label at their own game. In fact, he showed them it wasn't even their game to begin with, as music is all about emotions and rawness. Personal Trial and Tribulations Ocean has seen immense success in his professional life in the last decade, but sadly the same cannot be said about his personal life. He is a fiercely private person and even to this day, not much is known about him, yet few things couldn't stay out of the public eye. In 2016, his father sued him when he showed disappointment over his passing transphobic comments. He said about the incident, That was the last afternoon I saw my father and the first time I heard that word. Calvin Cooksey, his father, sued him for $14.5 million, claiming he has lost business due to his statement as people now perceive him as transphobic and racist. But he couldn't prove anything in court and lost the case. Eagles band member Don Henley also threatened to sue Ocean when sampled music from Hotel California on his song American Wedding. He said Don is just intimidated by his rendition of the song where the Eagles legal team said, Frank Ocean did not merely sample a portion of the Eagles Hotel California. He took the entire master track plus the song's existing melody and replaced the lyrics with his own. This is not creative, let alone intimidating. It's illegal. After this, no lawsuit was filed and it wasn't even ever mentioned again. Another tragic incident that happened in Ocean's life that shook him was the death of his younger brother Ryan Bro in a car accident in 2020. He was only 18 years old and died due to the blunt effect of the injuries. Goodbye to music. Earlier, Ocean somehow used to keep his fans updated on the new music, but for a while now, he hasn't said anything. The death of his brother has many fans speculating that he might not even release something for a very long time, or worse, never at all. Just like him, his fans are also quite empathetic and understand his pain. They know he has lost someone very dear to him, and even if he doesn't feel like writing or producing something, they can very well understand. Now this shows the hold he has on his fans. Whereas other artists' fans only care about getting entertained and not even see them as human due to their hyper pop star image. Fans know Ocean is a real person as he has never tried to sell them his manufactured version. In only a few years, he has been called the man with the meatest touch, the greatest one in the current generation, and much more. We can only hope to listen to his melodious music to escape from the loud blaring noise someday soon. If you liked this video, please subscribe to our channel and hit that bell button to get the notifications. Also, don't forget to watch other videos on this channel that explores more topics just like this.